Okay, now we have um, Grimoire Lab, a Python toolset for software development analytics. Big. Uh, <laughs> well, thank you very much. Uh, good morning. I'm sorry I don't have music, but I have some nice charts, so I hope that that also makes for the day. Uh, first of all, uh, if you want, you can download the, the slides. They are in my Twitter um, stream, and you can also get them from speakerdeck.com slash Viterja. Uh, maybe it's interesting because they have some links so that you can click on them and, and, and so on. Uh, well, I'm Jesus Gonzalez Barahona and I'm going to talk about Grimoire Lab. Uh, Grimoire Lab is a new tool set um, for doing software development analytics. The idea is to retrieve information from software development repositories and use that information to produce um, any kind of stuff that you may be interested in, from dashboards to reports to nice web pages where you can see what's happening in a project, for instance. Our approach is not to analyze source code, but to analyze processes and activity. That means that you can go to Git repositories or to Baxilla um, uh, repositories or to um, uh, IRC channels or to mailing lists or to uh, Stack Overflow and get the information about what's happening there. So our main focus is to track where developer development is happening or where people are talking about software development and get that information and then uh, do analytics in it. The main aim is to uh, find ways to learn how uh, open source software and software in general is being developed and also to find ways of visualize that information and make it clear so that players can be self-aware of what's happening uh, with them. So um, the structure of the talk is going to be like this. So first of all, I'm going very briefly to give some context about myself and Grimoire Lab. Then we are going to start looking at the software and let we will be, become practical just yes, to show some examples of how you can use Python uh, to, to, to retrieve information from repositories and stuff like that. And well, at the end, there is some, something for you. Um, well, I've been uh, researching on this topic in the university for um, some years, and at some point, um, um, me and some people in my research group decided to uh, start a, a, a small company doing the same kind of stuff. It is the company that did the software that I am preparing today, that I am presenting today. The company is intended to uh, use the software as a community uh, um, project. Right now, most of the contributions come from the company itself. But um, anybody is welcome to come and join the, the development and, of course, join the decisions on it. The company is 100% free software, free open source software, both for the software we use and for the software we produce. And uh, if you want to see what uh, the uh, Grimoire Lab can do, go to caldron.io. Uh, caldron it's basically uh, a web service where you can enter a uh, GitHub um, organization, an owner, or an organization, and basically that, that it does the analytics for that repository. It's going to pull everything in the Git repository and everything um, related to issues and pull requests. And in, in, in some time, produces a nice dashboard for you. You can also browse the dashboards already produced. All of that is done with free software, and the, let's say that the Glue um, software is uh, a Grimoire Lab. Of course, there are many other software uh, behind it, but still, you can get an idea of what can you do, and uh, at the same time, analyze your pet project. By the way, uh, the Python uh, organization in GitHub is, is analyzed, so you can look for it, and you can look at the dashboard and see how Python has been uh, developed. Um, the software doing the magic is Grimoire Lab. Um, we have a long story of uh, using Python for going to, uh, uh, to look for information or to, of software repositories. We started with Metrics Grimoire, like at maybe 10 years ago. That was uh, were a, 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 a set of tools for retrieving information from repositories and storing in SQL databases. And we were using that technology for research for many years. But at some point when we started the company, we decided that it was time to learn from the past and restructure everything from scratch. And we decided to rewrite everything. And one of the things that we decided is to use only Python. We had some other things in the previous uh, tool chain. And the second one was to try to make it, sorry, 
as, mu as much structural as possible, so that we could have very easily support for new dashboards, sorry, for new kinds of repositories, for instance, or for new kinds of uh, panels in a dashboard, or for new kinds of studies. So that we have now a plugable st structure where it's very easy to provide support for new things. And that's Grimoire Lab. So we started like one year ago, and in fact, this is the first time we are presenting it uh, fully. Uh, Grimoire Lab has a very simple, let's say, structure from the point of view of the data flow. Uh, usually, the data flow starts in repositories, uh, Git, GitHub, Mailman, whatever. And we have a tool called Percival, which basically goes to the repositories, extracts information, and uploads to Elasticsearch if you want, because Percival is completely uh, database agnostic. It only gets the data and produces uh, a collection of JSON documents that you can upload anywhere you want. Uh, in our case, we have software for uh, uploading it to Elasticsearch. Then, that's uh, what we call the raw index, an index in Elasticsearch is kind of a database or something. So we have raw indexes which have exactly the same information that you have in the original data source, which means that if you need to query wherever, you don't need to go any, any longer to the original data source, you just can query Elasticsearch, which is, of course, much easier. Then, for, 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 for producing, uh, let's say, added value indexes, we use Grimoire Elk. Grimoire Elk goes to the raw indexes and enriches the information. For instance, can do things like calculate how long did it take to close a ticket, or um, uh, tries to find out whether uh, a pull request is still open or not, and calculate numbers on based on that and stuff like that. So with that information, we produce, again, in Elasticsearch, new indexes that we call enriched indexes. And those indexes are designed for BSON with Kibana. Can also be uh, uh, queried with Python scripts, for instance, but you can uh, visualize them with Kibana. Our version of Kibana is Kibir, but it's a soft, soft fork of it, so it's very similar, and you can also uh, use Kibana if you want. And Kibana is producing the dashboard, the front ends. But with the same information that we have in Elasticsearch for Kibana, you can also use scripts to uh, retrieve it and, and do other nice things. Let's go now um, one by one. But before that, if you want, uh, go to the web page of uh, Grimoire Lab and you can get much more information, of course. But let's go uh, one tool uh, at a time. I already presented in Percival. Re remember going to repositories and uh, retrieving information and producing uh, JSON documents. Then we have, I, I already talked about Grimoire Elk, remember taking raw indexes and um, also managing Percival if needed and uploaded information. Then we have Arthur over there. Arthur is going to be released as a stable during the next weeks, but you can also, you can already play with it. And Arthur is for orchest orchestrating retrieval. When you are retrieving data from thousands of repositories of different kinds, and you want to do that continuously because you want to have the information updated, it's a complex task. Uh, Arthur is going to help us with that. So basically, uh, uses a uh, Redis uh, database to know what's happening and have uh, um, uh, a list of uh, jobs being done and stuff like that. And it's very useful if you have to uh, retrieve information in the large. So for you to have an idea of a scale, uh, right now we're working with the Linux Foundation in getting information from like uh, 10,000 Git repositories, for instance, and maintaining that information continuously updated. Um, Kibirer, I already commented, our soft fork from Kibana. It's the only thing that is not Python. And uh, panels, panels is the configuration for Kibirer, in fact, which is how um, uh, the information about the dashboards that we're using and the visualizations and, and all of that. And then we have sorting hat. Sorting Hat was developed several years ago, and the idea is to track identities. Uh, it can do things like merging similar email addresses with the, for the same person, or um, tracking affiliations for, pe for, for people based on email addresses, or on GitDM information, for instance, if that information is available. So the idea is to try to uh, make a mapping from identities to real persons, and then if that's important for the project, uh, do a, a mapping of that person to organizations, to companies, wherever. So all of them, as I said, except for Kibera, are written in Python. And in fact, are Python modules that can be uh, used directly from uh, a Python script. This is the tutorial that we are um, uh, preparing. You have the link down here. And it is uh, for um, trying to use everything uh, in, the, in the Grimoire Lab toolset. Uh, it's a still work in progress, but have a look at it, and that's where you can find some more details that I'm, I'm not going to have time now to, to talk about. Um, 
let's be practical, as I said, and let's start with Percival. Once again, Percival gets information from repositories and produces JSON files. So let's, let's look at how to do that. It's quite simple. It's Python 3, so you just get the Python 3 environment, you install with PIPI, and that's it. PIPI install Percival, you have the latest version, and then you just run it. With Percival, Percival is basically a Python module, but it's also a, a, a script. So you can run the script right over there. And just to state in this example, I want to run it with git, the git backend on that URL, which is a git repository. In this case, it's the git repository of Percival itself. And then it starts just fetching everything. Of course, it, it clones the repository to get the information and then runs git log with all sorts of options and whatever, and it starts producing JSON documents with the information in the repository. You can do exactly that for like 20 different data sources. And uh, it's like that. So you don't need to uh, uh, fight anymore with the APIs of the different uh, repositories and stuff. Uh, if you want to do the same stuff from Python, it's like this. So you can see how I'm just uh, importing the, the corresponding uh, model from, from Percival. This is for GitHub, by the way. But it's basically the same thing. Then I define the repository I'm interested in. And you can see how I just instanted a, a, a Python class, which is GitHub, with the corresponding information for the repository name, the owner, and the API token for GitHub. Of course, you, have, you need to, to get an API token, but you know that that's very easy from the GitHub user interface. And once that's done, you get a nice Python generator with all the items in the API. In this case, the API is for pull requests and uh, issues. So you get a nice JSON document per its uh, pull request impaired issue. And that's it. So this is, for instance, very simple code to just discriminate which ones are pull records and which one are issues. Because in the, in the data we retrieve, there is a field which states whether this is a pull record or not. So it's just a matter of doing that. But you, can, you have all the data available and you can do anything you may want within that loop. So this is for Percival. Um, the next step is looking, oh, I forgot about this, sorry. Uh, this is the list of backends that are right now supported. It's very easy to write a backend, by the way. If you are interested, it's usually like between uh, 100 and 200 of Python lines of code. Most of them are just um, uh, copying from a similar API. Uh, so it's quite simple. You can do that and, uh, and uh, um, do that on yourself. Uh, Percival has a plugable uh, structure where it's very easy to incorporate that even if you don't want to contribute upstream. But of course, we are more than happy to uh, get your uh, contribution if you want and you want to produce a new backend for, for something. For instance, I have a backend for GitLab, which is still not here, but it's, it took me like, I don't know, two uh, afternoons to, to, to write. The next uh, component, Grimoire Elk, as I said, Grimoire Elk is basically taking charge of uh, storing information in Elasticsearch, and it can also run Percival to get the information. So remember that Percival was just producing uh, JSON documents. Uh, in fact, it is producing Python dictionaries, and uh, Percival can get, can run Percival, sorry, Grimoire Elk can run Percival, get those Python dictionaries, and upload them as raw indexes to uh, Elasticsearch, and then use the same information to be enriched and produce the enriched indexes. Uh, that means that basically Grimoire L can produce dashboards because the information stored there is what Kibana uses to uh, visualize. And uh, it is, this is the way for using uh, uh, Grimoire L. So again, it's a Python um, uh, model, so you can install with, um, from PyPy. And uh, you also have another one, which is Grimoire Kidas, which is a part of the same package, but it's different because the, 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 the job of Grimoire Kidas is to, up to upload the panels to Kibana, sorry, to Elasticsearch, so that they can be sung with Kibana. So uh, remember that panels module that I was talking about, where we have definitions for visualizations and dashboards and stuff. The work of Kidas is basically uploading that information to Kibana so that you can produce automatically the dashboard. Of course, you can also do that via the Kibana user interface, but this is faster. So uh, the tool uh, for running this, once you install Grimoire Elk, you have a module which is called Grimoire Elk and a tool which is P2O. P2O is basically getting information from the repositories and creating the raw and the enriched indexes. So that's everything. And uh, it just, uh, you just only need to explain, sorry, to specify the uh, name of the um, indexes, git raw and git in this case. 
where the um, Elasticsearch instance is going to be. In this case, it was my laptop, so localhost. And you have to say, for instance, in this case, no ink means I don't want it to work incrementally. I want everything from uh, the very beginning. And uh, minus minus debug just to show some information about how it is working and where the repository is. In this case, it is a Git repository, and that's the list. And basically, that is going to do the same thing as before, that as Percival did, but storing the information in Elasticsearch. Once you do that, you can upload to, Kidab, to Kibana the, um, the, the, the information about the dashboard and the staff, and that's it. You have two row indexes, and you have a Kibana dashboard. You now uh, point your, your web browser to Kibana, and there is the dashboard for this repository. You can do that for many repositories if you want, because the index can be reused and, and, uh, and include information for many other repositories. And if you run again the same command without the uh, no, no, uh, no ink uh, step, sorry, no ink uh, option, it's basically going to go incrementally over the data source. That's basically it's going to ask, please give me everything since the, the last time I got this uh, information. So it's very efficient and it can be uh, ran every, for instance, 10 minutes and we very much synchronize it with, uh, I don't know, GitHub project, for instance. Um, so I will talk about that. First of all, Grimoire Elkbet. Well, when you are using Python, you can also use information in the Elasticsearch. Because in many cases, you are not exactly interested in producing a dashboard. You want to get some specific information that you may want. Or maybe you want to visualize it some, somewhere, in, in some other uh, way. So basically, you want to access the Elasticsearch information and do whatever you may want with it. it this is not something that we did, but I'm going to um, explain it so that you can see the value of having access to the data from Python. So for this, we are using the, uh, the, the standard uh, Elasticsearch API. The, the Elasticsearch API is a nice REST API, basically where you can query using HTTP on the REST, on the, on the, on the API. So this is using curl for just getting uh, one element of the index. And you can have an idea of what you have in the index. Of course, this is a JSON document, and basically you have, for instance, information, basic information in this case for a commit. In the real thing, you have like 30 different parameters. Obtain it from the commit, and then also uh, um, adapt it and enrich it with uh, Grimoire Elk. But you, you get the idea. So this is what you get with Curl. If you want to do similar stuff with Python, it's a matter of using a specific Elasticsearch packages that are going to access uh, Elasticsearch in a nicer way. So um, the people from Elasticsearch are producing two packages for Python, Elasticsearch and Elasticsearch DSL. Elasticsearch is like the low level one, basically mimics the API. And it's uh, quite simple to use if you know the API, but a bit difficult if you want to do complex queries. So that's why they also have Elasticsearch DSL. And the idea of Elasticsearch DSL is quite uh, similar to, uh, to the idea of SQL Alchemy, if you know it. So the idea is to uh, write composable queries so that making a query is just calling to same different functions on the same object, one after the other, so that you can compose very complex queries uh, in a simple way. So in this case, we are um, at, at the first line, we are creating a an Elasticsearch instance for Python, which is where my Elasticsearch uh, lives. Then I create a search, a basic search just saying I want to search something on the index, and the index is Git in this case. And then I start adding parameters to the query. So uh, begin with, I say, I want files created at zero. That means that for each commit, we keep track of how many files are uh, touched by it, and we don't want commits that are not touching any files. Usually they are merged commits, and for this we don't need them. Then we say, uh, I want everything where the author date is uh, uh, greater than 2016 and something. So that means give me all the data from that date on. Then I, I say I want commits with cardinality using the field has. That basically means give me unique commits. So if the same commit is repeated in several repositories, have the same has, just give me one, uh, count it as one. And then do a date histogram, which is basically using backets as quarters, in this case, of a time. So we are going to get several groups each of them calculated and aggregated according to this. So in short, it's going to give me the count of commits by quarter, ignoring merge commits and since some date. And uh, for running it, you only execute it and you get a Python generator on what you can, uh, where you can, sorry, and you get in this case a Python generator for each quarter 
and basically you can print the information you may want. So you can see it's quite simple and quite easy as well. Um, yes, I'm starting to finish. This is, as I said, the tutorial. If you look at the structure of the tutorial, there is a part for Percival, which is the more complete, and it's very easy to follow. Then there is some hints on how to produce dashboards, which is not much more than I told here. We are improving that part. And then there is a part about Python and scripting. Uh, probably during the next few weeks, I'm going to uh, write something about how to uh, combine this with Pandas for doing, um, let's say, advanced analysis and stuff like that. But you can imagine that this is not that difficult. And again, remember, if you want to see everything working, you can just use the Calder IO. And uh, there you can get an idea of what can be produced uh, with the software. And remember, there are many dashboards, even if you don't want to produce your own, there are many dashboards already produced that you can check, including the Python one, well, the Python according to the Python organization in GitHub. And um, yes, to finish, uh, so enjoy. And remember that we have uh, the uh, main web page for the uh, project here. We welcome contributions, and we are trying to create a community. And this is the right moment for entering it, because this is the first, so let's say, public announcement to developers. We have been talking about this for two other people for a while. But if you want to write a back end, or you have an idea about a new kind of analysis, or you just want to use it and don't, don't figure out how to do that, please let us know. We are more than happy of supporting you. Thank you very much. Okay, we have some time for questions or comments, if you have any. Yes, please. Uh, thank you for the talk. Uh, so, is Percival uh, provides any API, HTTP API? Sorry, can you repeat? Is Percival uh, provides any HTTP API? Like, uh, I want to build like um, a chatbot or something. No, it, Percival is quite simple. It only uh, provides JSON documents. In fact, as you saw, in fact, what it provides is a Python generator, and it's in, uh, in its round of the Python generator, and you get a Python -like dictionary. With that, you can do anything you may want. But right now, we have no support for anything else except for uploading to Elasticsearch, as I commented. Any other comment or question or whatever? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you a lot.